Welcome back to the second part of our screencast looking at the exciting world of the CIE 451 syllabus. Um, we just went over some of the logistics of the, of the website. Uh, looking at the website that is CIE451.wordpress.com and we saw that there was a syllabus link that was on the website and then we clicked through to that, we clicked through to the syllabus and lo and behold here we are. We had talked about some of the information here and some of the logistics about what we're doing. Let me go through though some of the description of our course and what we're trying to achieve. So as you know, this seminar is the second half of a year-long course that's divided into several different modules. Each of those is going to focus on a different specialization or focus area within comparative and international education and our doctoral program. The goal for us <clears throat> is to provide new doctoral students or continuing doctoral students in this case with a strong foundation in comparative education theory and then initiate them into the professional and academic field. So we've got readings and we've got discussions that are going to integrate theoretical frameworks and empirical analyses of comparative ed phenomenon. There are a lot of different ways that we're going to go with this. So I, I want to emphasize that one of the areas that we're really going to push this semester is theory testing and theory building. Now, theory testing, that is, as the name suggests, the process of testing whether a certain theory of your choosing is a plausible explanation of a phenomenon you would like to investigate. I just am going to highlight that sentence I just uh, said to you so that you have that and you're looking at that specifically. The point is, how can we use a, t a theory to explain a phenomenon and how can we test whether or not that theory does a good job of explaining that phenomenon or does a poor job, right? So as we go on here, put simply, the main focus of theory testing is to discover whether there is evidence that supports or does not support a particular theory. I'm going to highlight this as well because I think this is important in our field in particular. Any field that's developing its theoretical frameworks and its theoretical foundations as compared to an international education as a field is doing, I think it's crucial that we understand the theories that are being used or explained uh, as much as possible. We do not want to have only a superficial understanding of the theory. Because with only superficial understandings, it is very easy to misinterpret what that theoretical framework is doing, how it is helping you understand a phenomenon, or how it is not helping. So you have to deeply understand the theory and how it's used to frame that empirical research before you can adequately test it yourself. That's theory testing. Now, if we were to move on to theory building, Theory building in contrast, and you know what I'm going to do? Let me make this so that it's all one page. There we go. Theory building requires the synthesis of a broad range of literature and studies to provide evidence or confirm explanations to a given a phenomenon, and then you attempt to plausibly explain something in a different light or using a different perspective than has previously been suggested. Now that requires an acute awareness of what the plausible theories explaining the phenomenon currently are. In other words, you can't build a theory, well I suppose you can, it would be kind of silly to build a theory if there was already a theory that said exactly the same thing out there. So you have to survey, you have to know what theories are appropriate or possible explanations for a particular phenomenon in order to rule them out and then to build on them. So that requires awareness of what the plausible theories explaining the phenomena currently are and how they're used in empirical research. So you must understand all or most of the main theories that attempt to explain a particular phenomenon before you can build a theory to differently explain that phenomenon. It sounds redundant. I know it does, but interpret it this way. You have to know what else is out there before you try to create something new. You might not be creating something new. You might not be building a theory or building a perspective that did not exist before if you aren't aware of what else is already some of the main 
approaches or frameworks or theories that are being used for that phenomenon. Okay, so we'll be working on theory testing and theory building throughout, and I want you to keep that in mind because that is really going to be the crux of what we do every week. It's not just getting to know the theories anymore. That's what you did last semester. And it's not just critiquing them, which is also what you did last semester. In this case, we're going to empirically try to test them, and we're going to uh, meaningfully try to build theory. All right. What are our objectives? Well, uh, these are very similar to, or identical perhaps, to what you had for your objectives in the fall semester of this course. So acquiring the main schools of thought and international development and the role of education, developing an understanding of the theoretical perspectives that are influential in CIE, becoming familiar with the issues that surround particular elements of educational participation, equity, and quality, gaining a deeper understanding of the research methods that are used in the field, developing student research interests, those are your research interests within the field, and then gaining a thorough understanding and appreciation of theory testing versus theory building in comparative and international education research. That is going to be what separates uh, this semester in particular from last semester. How are we going to do it? Uh, well, again, if you've had me before, this won't be a surprise. It'll be the way that I always do class. Um, I might talk a little bit at the beginning in order to orient us, but I'm really going to expect that you're going to come to class prepared, that you will have watched the videos and done the readings and pre prepared any questions or notes that you need before class. Um, we're going to have class discussions throughout the semester that will, from time to time, be directed or led by you. Uh, so you should prepare for that. Um, I think it's very important that you share your own personal experiences and practical expertise in class. As you know, I do value the reflections that you bring and the experiences that you bring to our class every time. And I hope that you are able to always um, feel comfortable and understand how to interject your own experiences, expertise, um, any memories, anything else that might be relevant. But I do want to point out that it, an experience or an anecdote is often not enough to, to claim sort of universal knowledge or a, a causal relationship. And we want to be careful about that. While we value everyone's experiences and expertise, we also have to remember that we're social scientists. So we'll balance that, right? And we'll work on doing that together in class. Academic integrity is very important in this class, as in all classes. Uh, I'm not going to go through this any more than to say, if you use information or ideas from anyone else, anywhere else, you must cite it. You may not quote without properly citing. You may not paraphrase without properly citing. You may not borrow an idea without properly citing. It is very important when you forget to do this or you miss doing this, it results in plagiarism. And plagiarism can get you kicked out of our program, expelled from the university, etc., etc. I do not anticipate any sort of problem with this because I think that you all are um, advanced students. You are professionals in your own fields. This is not something that I feel that really will ever need to be discussed again, but I do want to hammer it home right now. Academic integrity, very important. I would also like to point out that if you are a student with a particular, they call them disabilities at our university, or if you have a special need, it's very easy for us to make accommodations for you. All you have to do is contact me and the Office of Academic Support Services, which is located in the University Center, room C212, or at the phone number highlighted right there on the screen. Please let me and the Office of Academic Support Services know as soon as possible in the semester if you're requesting an accommodation, and we will gladly do that. It is not a problem. Um, we also want to emphasize right here up front that Lehigh endorses the principles of our equitable community. You can get a, a copy of what those principles are at that web address. We expect everyone in this class to acknowledge and practice those principles. It's very important that we respect each other, that we respect differing viewpoints. It's a vital component of our learning environment, and also it's a natural component of the Comparative and International Education Program. So please know that that is super important, that we are always, always um, you know, welcoming, encompassing uh, uh, many different viewpoints 
that we will always try to understand and that we will never um, we will never judge. We might test your theory, but we will never judge. There are a couple of books that I would like for you to purchase. I, I do not think it is enough at this level in your program to simply um, check these out or borrow them. If you are going to check them out or borrow them, I would expect you to make copies that you can write on. Um, there needs to be some way that you can actually put your notes on the pages for these books. If you can find a cheap used copy, then get a cheap used copy. If you can find an online version that you can annotate, great, do it that way. If you can only uh, manage to find a library copy and then you make you know, Xerox copies of the, the book, then do that, whatever it takes to have a paper copy. We will be using and discussing extensively all three of these books as well as many other readings. Um, I would like to point out that I have carefully selected these books. These are not willy-nilly um, choices. I think they're all important and I think that you will really, really enjoy uh, reading these books. The first one that we're going to be using is um, Emmanuel Wallerstein's World Systems Analysis book or Introduction to World Systems Analysis from 2004. It is a rather a thin book. We'll, we'll handle it in one sitting. Um, you should be able to work your way through it fairly well. It will be something we'll be doing in conjunction with our th critical theory discussion uh, because it does have a nice link and so uh, make sure that you get a copy of that as soon as possible. It will be early in the semester that we, um, that we do this. The next is the Lechner and Boli World Culture Origins and Consequences book, also from the early 2000s. This is a uh, book that we will not read every chapter in, uh, but it I think is important to have access to all of the chapters. Um, we will read most of the chapters in the book. So in the book, though, this is I think groundbreaking work looking at world culture, and since world culture has been so uh, debated and discussed, not just here at Lehigh but also in the field more broadly, this is absolutely essential that you get a copy of this and that you read it carefully and thoroughly. Finally, we'll be doing something a little more, uh, whoops, a little more specific in topic. We'll be looking at Anderson's Equity and Information Technology in Education book. He's an Australian. It's from an Australian perspective. You will get a little different look at ICT and how that meshes with education. We'll also be talking about how we can use our theory testing and theory building to e evaluate the ways that equity and ICT and education are discussed by Anderson. There are a lot of other readings that are required for this course. You should make it a high priority to get these articles and readings as soon as possible. There is a reason why I highlighted in red and underline this section right here and I'm going to read this verbatim so there's no confusion. It is your responsibility to find and download copies of the readings in advance of class so that you can do the reading and be prepared for class discussion. May I please emphasize that you should not wait to find the readings. Get them now. Get the readings for every week of the semester now. Do not wait until the week before or, or even two weeks before. Get them all now. Set aside an afternoon where you are going to look at the Lehigh Library online databases like JSTOR and ERIC or you're going to go to Google Scholar or you're going to do whatever you need to do to find, download, or make a copy of all of the readings for the whole semester right now. All right, I don't think I could be any clearer on that, so I will leave it at that. We're going to end our second part of the screencast right now. When we come back in part three, we'll be talking about course grading and assignments.